The question is that the motion be agreed to. Party, well, Mr Seymour, opposition. you might so wait, like to wait until you've been called. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, Mr Seymour, you have been giving your views quite long and loud. Uh, I didn't intervene, but I think you could follow the, you know, the formalities of the House and seek a call. Mr Speaker. David Seymour. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise on behalf of the ACT Party in opposition to this bill, and I think what we've just seen uh, is what happens when a thoughtful, generally respected, diligent member stands up and gives a speech that she doesn't truly believe, that the people in her electorate and community don't truly believe, and about a subject about which she knows almost nothing about. She complains that partnership schools, Kūtahorua, are taking money. Well, yes, Mr Speaker, they are taking money because they are educating students. Was the member seriously arguing that the students at partnership schools, Kūtahorua, are not deserving of education funding? Of course money is going to them because the students attending the schools are entitled to that money. She says the model has failed overseas. Well, she obviously hasn't read Stanford University's credo research in the United States. She obviously hasn't read C.D. Howe's research of charter schools in Alberta. She obviously knows nothing about the free school movement in Sweden or the success uh, that they have had for students in that country. Mr Speaker, she talked about Whangaruru. She said that the schools are unaccountable in the same breath as she talked about the school that did fail and that we closed because it failed. She talked about the curriculum. Well, the fact of the matter is, Mr Speaker, that partnership schools, Kūta Horua, are required to teach a curriculum that maps to the principles of the New Zealand curriculum or its Māori equivalent. Mr Speaker, she talked about transparency. How many other schools are required to issue four quarterly reports, including reports that have their performance data for national standards and NCEA results. There is no other type of school that has to report that data on a quarterly basis or that can be closed for failing to meet its targets on that data. Mr Speaker, that was an embarrassment of a speech. The member knows nothing about the topic and I doubt she really believes it. She said that the schools are not subject to the OIA. Many organisations supply services to the government but are not subject to the OIA. But with all of the disclosure to the Ministry of Education, which I just mentioned, well, here's news for the member. The Ministry of Education is subject to the OIA. Therefore, there is more OIA-able data about partnership schools, Kūta Hora, than any other type. Then she complained that they make profit. Well, she's factually incorrect because almost all of the current partnership schools are non not-for-profit trust. However, let's just say that they are all making a profit. Well, I hate to tell the member, but there is profit throughout the education system. The people that build the classrooms, the people that make the computers, the people that sell the stationery are all making profit. If the member wants to banish profit from the education system, there wouldn't be very much of it less, but left. But that is sadly what happens when a member who is otherwise thoughtful and intelligent gets up to take a call for someone else when she doesn't believe what she's saying. And it's also an embarrassing day for the Labour Party. The Labour Party that introduced tomorrow's schools under the great David Longy and effectively made every school a charter school by the standards of the day is now reduced to such weak argument based on factual inaccuracies. But Mr Speaker, let's talk a little bit about partnership schools uh, because New Zealand's state school system actually works very well for the average student. The problem is at least far too many disengaged and not achieving their potential. That is the reality. And this is especially worrying because in the 21st century we see globalisation, we see automation, we see low school jobs disappearing. It will be the century of knowledge and skills. And for Labour Party and the teacher unions, the solution will always be to throw more money at the problem and hope for the best. But we know uh, that that just has not worked. Labour have spent billions in their time in office and barely dented the problem. International comparisons show and might have predicted this because beyond a certain amount of expenditure per child, more money simply does not make a difference. The opposition's approach to education is best summed up as every single local state school should be the very best school for your child. Every single local state school must be the very best school for your child. And we did hear a little bit about that in Jenny Solis' speech. 
But the question is obvious. Kids are a pretty diverse bunch, so how can one type of school cater for the needs of every student? Or do the schools just default to helping the average student, so to speak, asking the rest to conform or become frustrated, disengaged and slip through the cracks, which sadly is the reality for too many children today. As William Butler Yeats once said, education is not the filling of a pail, it's the lighting of a fire. And that's an approach, that means an approach that works for one student may not work for another. Some students thrive in a structured traditional environment such as the Vanguard Military School. Others prefer more freedom, uh, such uh, as the Rise Up, uh, Rise Up Trust School in South Auckland. Some love open plan bustle, others need quiet learning spaces, some are engaged by the arts and others by hands-on engineering. And it's a delusion to believe that every school across the country can address the full spectrum of needs and potential held by Kiwi students. The reality is that specialisation and choice are vital if we want an education system with something to offer every child. The state should fund a range of schools. It should let kids and parents choose what lights their particular fire, not just what school is closest to them. It talks about we should be celebrating diversity, not just one size fits all. And that's where partnership, also known as charter schools, as the member incorrectly referenced them throughout her speech, uh, has now close to 1,000 students. That is, Families of 1,000 students have made the choice to attend these schools, uh, whether they be Steiner, whether they be Māori medium, whether they have a military ethos. And while all of these schools have open, open enrolment policies, there are trends in the types of students they attract. Mostly, they are students who have been disproportionately underserved or let down by the state school system. Now, I'm aware of a significant number of partnership school students were not attending any school at all uh, before, they before they enrolled at the current partnership school. We talk about Whangaruru. I know of one student at Whangaruru who was 14 years old and had not been registered by the New Zealand education system at all at that stage. It did not exist in the education system's records. Uh, well, for Tracy Martin, the, the student would have started education uh, at the time that the New Zealand First Party and Labour were in power, and I don't understand why they didn't make sure that that student was registered, but that's by the by. And unfortunately, Chris Hipkins' members' bill would seek to close down all partnership schools, casting these students back to the system that let them down, or worse, out of the school system entirely, which was the reality for many of them before that. And the sad thing is that most Labor MPs, and there are some notable exceptions and I commend them, but most Labor MPs have never visited a partnership school. They're not even interested in seeing the life-changing work happening at their schools and facing up to the students and parents who choose to attend them that they would like to close the school. They'll try to belittle the choice. Maybe they should take a leaf out of US President Barack Obama's policy, uh, who calls charter schools incubators of innovation and holds an annual charter school week under his presidency. But apart from anything else, we can argue about the ideology and the data, all of which comes out in favour of partnership schools. But here's the real question, and the question that Jenny Salisa and other members opposite might like to ask themselves, why is it that parents in my community are choosing partnership schools kūrahōrua? Why is it that community groups in my electorate are applying in large numbers to establish partnership schools kūrahōrua? Maybe the choices that these people are making are actually telling you something about their preference. And the successes that come out with these students are many. Two years ago, a partnership school student told me, I never knew I was smart until I came here. Opposition members should just think about that for a moment. It's all very well to talk about the ideology, but let's just think about that for a moment. A student who would have gone through her life thinking that she was not smart when presented with a new option realised that she was very, very smart. And the fact of the matter is that had she not been given that opportunity, she would never have made that realisation. Are members opposite really in favour of removing options that allow students to discover their success? And it's replicated right across the partnership school system. Te Kurahorua o Whangarei Tereinga Paraoa last year achieved pass rates of 84% in Level 1 and 100% in Level 2. Vanguard Military School, 93% for Level 1, 100% for Level 2. And it's early days at this point. These results will be continuously monitored. We'll be, they'll be held to account by the Crown. They'll be closed if they don't succeed. 
And that's the reason that I focus on the principle of choice and the reality of results. It's because the vocal opponents of this policy will do anything to avoid engaging in ideas and facts on this issue, as we saw from Jenny Salisa just this evening. They'll put forward spurious accusations and outright falsehoods, as I rebutted earlier in this speech. But I would just go to one very simple question for people listening at home. Are the opponents of partnership schools really so worried that eight very small schools are not going to succeed, will close and fail, and their students will go back to the state system? Is that their concern? Or are they and their union supporters terrified that partnership schools are going to be an enormous success, growing in popularity and revolutionising the old order and the way we do things in New Zealand education, order. Mr Speaker? I believe it the is the latter, and that is why I'm in favour of partnership schools and opposed to this bill. Thank you, Mr Speaker.